Hey everyone, this is a high level overview of modes in Blender 3D. And that's modes, not nodes. Anyway, when we start Blender, the 3D viewport, that's this big area of the screen, by default is set to object mode. We can see that object mode is displayed in this drop down box, but we'll see other modes are available. We'll discuss these different modes and how they are actually different depending on the type of object we've selected. Think of object mode as kind of a home base mode for our entire scene. In object mode, we create new objects by pressing Shift A and then choosing from a bunch of different types of objects. Mesh objects are the first option, but we see there are many types of objects. Object mode is where we arrange our scene. We can make objects bigger or smaller, move them around and rotate them, but we don't actually do any work on the objects themselves. To do that, we select an object and we go into edit mode. We can do so by changing the drop-down box at the top, or when we're in object mode and an object is selected, we can press tab on the keyboard to enter edit mode. Although there are other modes we'll cover, object and edit mode are the two most common used. So the tab key on the keyboard is set to toggle between these two. In edit mode, we notice the objects look different and we have different tools available on the screen. It's important to know that some settings and icons are only available in certain modes. So if you're following a tutorial and you don't see the drop down or setting you're looking for, it may be that you're not in the right mode. The default cube is a specific type of object known as a mesh object and going into edit mode displays the points, edges, and faces that make up the object's 3D mesh. This simple cube has eight points known as vertices, connected by 12 lines known as edges, and together they form six flat planes, which are called faces in Blender. There are three selection modes in edit mode depicted by these icons up here. This is vertex select mode, and in this mode we can select vertices. The second selecting mode is edge select, and with this we select edges of a mesh. And the third is face select where, you guessed it, we can select the faces of the mesh. There are reasons to use all three of these selection methods and there's so much to cover with selecting in Blender that I have an entire video about it that you can watch next. It's linked to in the description. Oh, and if you're still watching, please consider hitting that like button. Thank you so much. We won't cover all the things we can do in edit mode because that will take forever. But this is where we can change, build, and edit the mesh of our object. By doing things like subdividing it, by making edge loops, by extruding different parts of it, by resizing parts of it, insetting faces, beveling, and so much more. When we're done working on the shape of an object, we can go back into object mode by simply pressing tab on the keyboard. Then we can go select another object and press tab to go into edit mode and work on that object. And this wasn't always possible, but for a while now, we've actually been able to hold shift and select multiple objects, at least multiple objects of the same type, and then go into edit mode to edit all of them without going back and forth. Yes, Blender has come a long way. So these are all mesh objects, but let's look at some other object types and what edit mode looks like in them. This is a curve object, for example, which is a completely different class of objects than mesh objects. Selecting a curve and then pressing tab takes us into edit mode, but curve objects have different vertices with these handles on them and moving, rotating and scaling the handles changes the shape of the curve. So we see that edit mode works a little bit differently with this type of object than with mesh objects. Let's go back to object mode and we'll press shift A to add a different type of object. This time we'll do a text object. Pressing tab to enter edit mode with a text object selected is how we actually type the text of the object. Pressing tab takes us back to the object where we can move, scale, and rotate the object. See that right here? I also have a video all about text objects and how they work. And we won't cover them all, but here's one more type of object. Let's add a meta ball object. These things are kind of weird. Press tab to enter edit mode, and we don't have vertices at all. We instead have these circles, and we can duplicate them, make them bigger or smaller, move them around, and the balls kind of meld together when they get close to each other. So this is just an entirely different type of object, and edit mode works differently based on the type of object. So let's go up to this drop-down box. Remember where there were a whole bunch of options here? Well, that was when we had a mesh object selected. With this meta ball object type, we only have object in edit mode. So different modes are available depending on the type of object we have selected. But let's go back to a mesh object and see what all those other modes were about. We see object in edit mode, then we see sculpt mode, and this brings us into a completely different mode with its own interface specifically for sculpting our object. Sculpting is a whole different world with its own tools and settings displayed. And you guessed it, I have a video all about getting started with sculpting. And all the videos mentioned by the way are linked to in the description. So sculpt mode is for sculpting. Let's see the next mode. This one's called vertex paint. And this is a way to paint the individual vertices. And I honestly don't ever use this, so I don't understand it that well, but it's a different mode with its own purpose, settings, and tools. The next mode I do understand a little bit better, and it's called weight paint. 
Here we also paint on the mesh, but in a way that's called a weight map. You won't actually see the paint on the object. And this gives weight where the red is the strongest weight and the blue is the lightest and greens and yellows are somewhere in between. And this is a little off topic and it's too much to cover here, but there's all sorts of things we can do with weight maps. For example, we could tell Blender to put hair on this object and say we wanted more hair where the weight was heavier and less hair where the weight was lighter, stuff like that. Anyway, the next mode is texture paint mode, which is more complicated than you might think, but we can load a texture, which can serve as our blank canvas, and then we can paint on it. And this paint actually will show up on the object. In this mode, we have different brushes and settings for painting, much like you'd see in Photoshop or other painting programs. I'll point out one more thing. Remember Metaballs only had object mode and edit mode, while mesh objects had more modes? Well, other objects have modes that are specific to them. And some object types don't even have modes other than just object mode. For example, lights only have object mode. There is no edit mode for them. Because when we have a light selected, we get a light properties tab that appears in the properties panel. You actually get one of these tabs for almost every type of object you have selected. Play around with it. Hit that like button and you will make my day. Consider subscribing for more basic Blender tutorials.